We're here at Cooper Field on the campus of Georgetown University. The two-seeded Hoyas hosting the Colonial Champions Delaware Blue Hens alongside the coach, Don Zimmerman. I'm Jay Alter. Truly 90 seconds before we were about to go on the air, the evacuation has begun in the bleachers here at Cooper Field. We're at a weather delay, likely a half hour delay. You take a look at the NCAA tournament bracket. There's seven spots secured in next weekend's quarterfinal. The only spot up for grabs is between Georgetown and Delaware. We desperately want to face off, just like everybody watching at home. But we have been told we will at least be delayed for the next half hour. Let's get people excited, Coach. What can they look forward to once we're done with this weather delay? Well, they can look forward to watching the number one scoring defense in the nation in the Georgetown Hoyas. Eight goals a game. That's a phenomenal stat. They're a well-oiled machine, fundamentally sound, tenacious, play the aggressor. They got one of the best in between the pipes at goal, too. You're not kidding. In the pipes, number 24, Owen McElroy is a grad student. Number one in save percentage at 625. And now they have 17. The senior co-captain, Gibson Smith, he now owns the Georgetown all-time career calls turnover record at 89. Delaware's offense, they're going to have their hands full tonight, but they've got the attack unit to do it. Number one, J.P. Ward. Number two, Ty Kurtz. And number 19, Mike Robinson. They all give you something different, but they work together. They've got great chemistry. They are fun to watch. And how about number 22, Clay Miller? This was the number one play on SportsCenter top 10 for that nifty behind the back. You see, the bleachers have been evacuated. The earliest we can begin this game is 7.58 Eastern time. We'll keep you posted on ESPNU. One final spot up for grabs in the quarterfinal. Hopefully we can face off from Georgetown as soon as we can. Want to manage COVID just? be able to have all been evacuated this was 90 seconds before the game was supposed to begin Don Zimmer juiced up focus on the task at hand you know they might be talking coach will do something will go over the Roger excellent job with this program held up in your guy well that's plan B I mean right now right. They're, they're thinking 30 minutes we're gonna get out there and and I will say that coach Kevin Warren he was on our staff at UMBC. He did an outstanding job with our defense. We had terrific teams. Um, he is one of the most passionate men I know. Um, he he loves his kids. Um, he he lives lacrosse. Uh, he's a family man first, but his players love him because number one of his passion, but number two, he's honest. He's going to be tough. He's going to be honest with you. He's going to let you know what you're doing right, what you're doing wrong. But at the end of the day, he's just a terrific man and an outstanding mentor representing Georgetown University. Well, he'll have to bottle up that passion, wait for face-off as all of us are waiting for face-off of the weather delay. We've been showing people our bracket, seven spots secured in the quarterfinal. Let's talk about number one, Maryland. The Terps come in the total favorite in this tournament. What makes Maryland so good? Well, I think they've got uh, excellent personnel at every position. They have depth. Uh, they're certainly well coached. And they're hungry, you know. Uh, they, I love the way they play the game. They love picking the ball off the ground. They love passing the ball to their teammate. They're totally unselfish. And defensively, they're just tough. It's well-skilled, fundamental, all on the same page, and they're solid in the goal. Yeah, they made it look easy today. More than 20 goals scored in that win against Vermont. They now go on to a rematch of last year's national championship game with Lars Tiffany's Virginia Cavaliers. That'll be a great matchup. Great matchup. And, and you know, uh, things change. That game was, uh, you know, maybe six weeks ago. Uh, but things change over six weeks. Guys get yeah. banged up. They come back. Uh, teams are able to scout each other uh, and get in more depth as far as that's concerned. And your team just grows and develops. So uh, should be a great matchup uh, next weekend. If you're just joining us, Don Zimmerman, Jay Alter, we are in an unfortunate weather delay. We were less than two minutes away from facing off lightning struck here in D.C., so we will wait for face-off, hoping to get it at 7.58 Eastern time. We'll be back with you then. Bow out, but right before face-off, we're talking 90 seconds bleachers. 
at 8.13 Eastern Time, and that'll settle who will take the f this magical season weekend. San Hoyas, Georgetown University, that was the sign that these two teams could come back, take the field after the lightning delay was over. I mean, we were 90 seconds away from face-off the first time when lightning struck here in D.C. Weather delay over, both teams on the field, seven spots secured in next weekend's quarterfinal. Final spot up for grabs tonight between Georgetown and Delaware. Don Zimmerman, Jay Alter with you. Coach, these are two teams playing their best lacrosse of the season at the right time. Absolutely right, and that's what you want. You want to peak for the playoffs, and these teams are ready. Uh, talk to both coaches. Out of gold, waiting for one of these two teams, the winner of this game. Boy, Owen McElroy would love to keep his historic season for the Hoyas alive. Leads the nation it goals against average when you have him in between the pipes you have tons of confidence well you have a great defense playing in front of him and then he's the last uh, wall of defense and he really is a super goalkeeper his save percentage really shows that in goal for the delaware blue hands it's the grad student matt kilcarry out of lake sherwood california colonial athletic association tournament mvp delaware you could argue they've played their best three games of the season, the two in the Colonial Tournament, and then on Wednesday night in a 12-goal win against Robert Morris. They're playing very well, and this goalkeeper is hot. Uh, Delaware has not lost since he's been in the cage, so let's see what happens. The blue hens in blue and yellow. Logan Premtage at the faceoff X at Georgetown. In the home gray and navy, two-seeded Hoyas. A terrific 15-1 season. They've won 11 in a row, including a Big East championship. They've got James Riley, the number eight face-off man in the country, ready to go. Facing off at 60% on the year, and we are underway in our eighth and final game of the weekend. A terrific opening round, outstanding action. All day yesterday, all day today, we'll try and bring it home for you. It's Delaware that starts with the ball. And, you know, Riley came up with the possession, but to give Delaware credit, their wings were awfully aggressive on that play. We're able to strip the ball and get it on possession. First, first chance of the goal goes to the Blue Hens. They're for Georgetown, the number one scoring defense in the country, allowing just over eight goals a game. So if you're Delaware, how do you attack this super talented Hoyas defense? Well, I think they're going to run a lot of two-man games, the Canadian style. Uh, work hard off the ball, but they have to play their game. Which team plays their game for 60 minutes? That'll decide the outcome. Now, Georgetown so good at causing turnovers that they do that on the opening possession. Zach Geddes on the clear, number 13 in gray. He was drafted on Tuesday by the Chaos. He's PLL bound, number eight overall. We get our first look at this Hoyas offense. The Georgetown defense, for good reason, gets a lot of credit, but this is a really potent offensive unit for the Hoyas as well. No doubt about it. You know, they go against each other every day, so their defense is making their offense better, and their offense is making their defense better. Here's Alex Trippi, the transfer from North Carolina. Gets his hands free, went low, saved by Kilcarry. Goalkeepers want to get that first save under their belt, build their confidence. That time, uh, Jason Sider, number 23, played real good individual defense. Both teams certainly capable of scoring, but it wouldn't surprise you just knowing the personnel and the strengths of these teams, the pace they want to play. If this game has a slow feel to it. Although, what a start into the side netting. Great opportunity. Ty Kurtz couldn't squeeze the angle home. Great pass, though. Clay Miller, we talked about him at the top. He's dangerous inside, but he also can handle the ball. He's a good dodger from the wing and from behind. He's got great vision. Kurtz, a crafty Canadian out of Ontario. Usually he can score in those tight angles. Just missed it. Georgetown trying to keep this in play, can't do it. Hoyas turned it over. The so defense could very well be the story. Two teams that build the backbone of the program on the defensive side of the ball. We know, Jay, they say you win games with offense, you win championships with defense. Let's see what happens tonight. Don Zimmerman won three national championships. Head coach of Johns Hopkins here with us at the booth tonight. What is the key to a successful tournament run? 
Well, you have to be healthy. And, um, you know, your players have to uh, be ready to play sudden death lacrosse. You know, one and done. If you lose, you're going home. So uh, this is what these guys come to school to play for. They come to play the, the game at the highest level, and they understand what the consequences are. With seven spots already taken to the quarterfinal, all eyes on Delaware and Georgetown. Who will be that eighth team in next weekend's outstanding quarterfinal? Delaware trying to shock the lacrosse world. Not going to be easy going against this Hoyas defense. We have our first whistle of the game. Loose ball hold. Good call. Could have called a, a penalty for being up and around the neck. Let's see it here. Good body-to-body -body contact. There he gets and holds him a little bit. Good call by the official. Let him play tonight. This is that second midfield for Delaware. They run two midfields, primarily their first, but the second can get there and get the job done. On attack, it's really the same three guys all night long. J.P. Ward, Mike Robinson, and Ty Kurtz. Head coach Ben DeLuca called them the engine of this team. Another big hit, and McElroy scoops it up. You're not going to see either team, I think, substitute uh, much in the attack. You know, in lacrosse, you have the offsides rule. So when the ball goes down the other end, that attack can rest. They rest on the field. They don't have to come off the field to rest. Yeah, you were telling me before the game, it's like football, right? You give your offense some time to rest so you don't have to substitute nearly as much. Both of these teams rely on that attack unit. Owen Grant, the Colonial Defender of the Year, comes up with the cause turnover. He's dangerous in transition, has it here. Six goals to his name on the season. Gives it up, though. Delaware will push transition when they have it. Grant's an outstanding player. 30 calls turnovers during the season. If you love defense, this is the game for you. Both teams dialed in on defense. Five minutes into it, we've yet to have a goal. Two turnovers each. And this is not bad offense, Coach. This is no. just two excellent defensive units. Absolutely. Both goalies have made some nice saves early. Delaware coming in with their first midfield. Drew Lincaitis. Perfect pass. Stinging the corner. J.P. Ward opens the scoring for Delaware. Great to get on the board first. Drew Lankaitis, real nice drive to the goal again, biting up. And look at the wrist action. J.P. Ward slips down the backside. Really nice look and a great finish. Doesn't hold on to the ball, gets it, it's gone. One little fake. Face him off. Ward was first team all colonial this season had five goals against Robert Morris at the play-in game on Wednesday Ben DeLuca said look we know plenty of respect to Georgetown they are a well-deserving two seed in the tournament but he really liked the way his team had been playing really liked that they played their best game of the season on Wednesday night against Robert Morris and they have come out on the road against a really talented team and they've thrown the first punch right and, and you got to be the aggressor you know if, if you don't expect to win you shouldn't even come and 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 obviously uh, with our conversation with coach DeLuca his team is poised ready and hungry to win this ball game you know I actually said in our coaches meeting What's the plan? Try and keep it close, get into the fourth quarter. He goes, no, we're there to throw the first punch and win this game. Georgetown has won 11 in a row. They've looked as good as anybody in the country, but they're on the back foot to start. Clay Miller makes it 2-0 Delaware, and the Blue Hens are ready to battle. We talked about Clay Miller at the opening. He is very good inside. Drew Lankaitis again with the ball. Perfect timing on the cut. Miller again catches it. Little fake. Put it on net. The Blue Heads team that struggled in the early part of the season has really found their stride. They've won six in a row. 
Well, it's a confident sport, and the Blue Hens have it here in D.C. right off the faceoff win. Great looking handle. for more. Went behind the back to try and get it to Ward, threw it away. Well, I'll tell you, that was a nice faceoff win by uh, Premtage, but he's got to finish the play. You got to make that 10 yard pass, put it right on the money. But Georgetown struggled to just get a settled possession. Only one shot attempted. Three turnovers, very uncharacteristic of a Kevin Warren team. Delaware defense likes to throw checks, and they're very good at it. Here we go, Grant! We've yet to see Dylan Watson get involved, the senior number 45 in gray. He leads the nation in goals per game with more than three. First line midfield of Declan McDermott, Alex Trippi, and Graham Bundy, the Big East midfielder of the year, number nine in gray. Oh, Georgetown. nice save Great that time. save. Kilcarry comes up huge again. Good take by Dylan Watson. He wants his left hand. During the course of the game, the ball will be in his pocket no more than a minute. Gets it, gets rid of it. He's a shooter. Leaving through traffic. Trippy finally gives it up midway through the shot clock after it reset from the kill carry save. Here's Graham Bundy Jr. on the run, whizzed it wide. Georgetown backs it up. 27 seconds left on the shot clock. Playing man to man defense. Another oh, nice. save by Kilcarry. That's three on the night. That's the start you want. Looks like he's seen the ball very well. His defense is playing as a unit in front of him. scored the last goal for Delaware, settles it down for the Blue Heads. He likes to come back right around the goal line extended. He's right-handed, but he can come around left-handed. Trying to get those hands free. Knocked down by McElroy. This Hoy is team. Over the course of the season, they're a great first quarter team. They've scored 71 goals on the year in the first quarter. That's the most of all four quarters. But they are on the back foot. No goals in the opening nine minutes. How do they wake this offense up? Well, you know, look, there's a, long, a lot of time left in this game. You can't hit any kind of panic button. Uh, you just get back into your offense, run your offense, and try to get quality shots. Your goal should not be a goal. It should be, let's get a quality shot. If we can do that, the goals will come. Here's Alex Trippi trying to spin his way in. Missed it. Trippi likes his left hand that time. Good job by the uh, blue hand defense, forcing him to do his weak hand. TJ Haley, 15 seconds left on the shot clock for Georgetown. Delaware bending, not breaking. Hoyas have five seconds to shoot. Kill carry again, close that angle down. They're going to call him for in the crease. Oh, they're going to call push. That was close. Reset the shot clock for 60 in this situation. Yep. Ball back to Georgetown. Delaware was three seconds away from a shot clock violation. Now, as coach said, that shot clock goes back to 60. Let's go, 10 minutes without a goal. Two-seeded Georgetown looking to try and break down this Blue Den Hens defense. Curl around the cage, Another kill seven. carry again. That's four and they've all been huge. 
setting the tone here in D.C. Matt Kilcarry, the outstanding goalie for the Blue Hens. Here comes Delaware in transition. Nice job by that time by Georgetown's James Donaldson. Just got a piece of that shot. That could have easily been a third goal for the Blue Hens. Good counterattack action. Yeah, they like to run in transition. They got some defensemen that can score. Nick Jessen on the run, fires it past McElroy. Delaware takes a 3-0 lead to start this opening round matchup. Nick Jessen, the junior, 6-1-180, one, wants his left hand, and he gets it. Real good, strong move. It's all about the first move. Gets his left hand free and an excellent play shot. Here we go again. This is what you want. Get your hands free, let it rip. Face him off. Want to manage COVID? Just pass, pass, test. to be able to. For the NCAA 2022 men's lacrosse first round, Don Zimmerman, Jay Alter with you. Head coach of the Blue Hens, Ben DeLuca, he couldn't have drawn it up any better. He couldn't have scripted this a 3 0 lead on the road against the two seeded Georgetown Hoyas. Well, we saw and heard his approach about this game. And his team is hungry, they're confident, and they came to win. And what we've seen now in the first, you know, seven plus minutes is uh, Delaware really taking command. And for anybody thinking, well, they're playing a two seed. The two seed's going to find a way to win. They always do. This is a mismatch. Well, Delaware can prove you're wrong. In 2007, Delaware played two seed in Virginia. They won that game, went on to make the Final Four, made championship weekend in 07. So it's happened before. In fact, the Blue Hens have done it before. Well, you're not going to be in the NCAA tournament unless you're a good ball club. And uh, over the course of the season, both of these teams have developed you know, chemistry and confidence that you need to, to take it all the way. So Delaware's thrown the first punch. How do the Hoyas punch back? Again, don't hit the panic buttons. Stay with your offense. Right on cue! Graham Bundy Jr. delivers exactly what the Hoyas needed. This goal comes off of a timeout, so this was a set play, little inside action. Bundy pops out, reads the defender's head, pops out, gets rid of the ball in a hurry. Nice look, hands are free, and he rips it. Graham Bundy, 42 goals, 25 to six, 67 points. He's a big EMO shooter as well. Now you know why, can let it rip Brady. And rear back and fire. 2022 Big East Midfielder of the Year shows why. Riley, a clean faceoff win. And with Riley at 60% at the faceoff, that Georgetown could get into some make it take it lacrosse. Well, the faceoffs are so important. Possession is everything. Not only can you score a goal, but the other team can't because they don't have the ball. Possession offense is really a key element in the game of lacrosse. Declan McDermott unsettled, scoops it up midway through the timer. DJ Haley, he's the quarterback, likes to attack from behind the cage at X, has Delaware hung up here. Delaware just plays the mirror there. They don't go back with the pick man. If a man goes back to set the pick, his man stays in front of the goal. They're playing five versus four on D. That's not bad. Another terrific stop from Matt Kilcarry. He's dialed in early. Five saves of the opening quarter. Here come the Blue Hens the other way in transition. Nice job by the uh, George Hammond. He's getting back into the hole, taking away the counterattack possibility. To the close defenseman, the senior. Owen Grant, number 81 in blue and yellow. Six goals on the season. He was the Colonial 
Athletic Association Defender of the Year. He runs full field every time in transition. He wants that ball. And he's making an opponent run with him. Here's Clay Miller. Delaware settling it down. They've controlled this first quarter. Great cut. And the goal! Mike Robinson, the crafty Canadian, makes it 4-1 Delaware. Mike Robinson, the junior, wants his left hand. He can sting it from the outside, but what an excellent cutter. And again, the feed is right on the money. For you young players watching tonight, when you feed the ball, put it on the stick. Nice goal. Georgetown, who sports the number one scoring defense in the country. Many people would say the top goalkeeper in the country, and Owen McElroy, have allowed four goals in this first quarter. They only allow an average of eight over the course of an entire game. Playoff lacrosse, you throw out all the record books for these games. These players know it's one and done. Sudden death lacrosse. All those stats compiled in the regular season, they don't matter tonight. One minute left to this opening quarter. Georgetown finds themselves in a three-goal hole. I like Booner! I like Booner! Come on, come on. They can hold for the last shot of the quarter. Shot clock is off. There's the switch there. Good job. Good communication. Delaware has been so disciplined on defense in this first quarter. Nice Great look! pass! Declan McDermott with the feet of the night finds Alex Trippi, his fellow first line midfielder, camping out on the doorstep. Just a terrific goal. This is a great play. Works hard, looks like he's gonna shoot the ball at the last minute. Takes it off, something off of it, feathers it in there. Boy, Georgetown needed that. Nice finish by Trippy. Got himself in front of the goal. All he had to do was catch it and redirect it. Trippy, the transfer from North Carolina from nearby this area, Great Falls, Virginia, originally. And Kevin Warren did such a terrific job at the transfer portal. It's a big reason why. This team is the two seed at 15 and one. Delaware giving them everything they can handle. Tons of hits on the faceoff. X Hoyles will look for one more at the end of the quarter. Why not? Right off the faceoff. James Riley. Don't call him a Fogo. He can score. That's goal number six on the season. And Georgetown gets two goals in 15 seconds. They're back within one. Don't call Riley a Fogo. Stays on the field, battles for the ball. Three on three games, exciting. Georgetown comes up with it. And there's Riley coming down. Nobody picks him up, looks the guy off, and a great feed. Puts it right between the legs. Sometimes it takes that individual effort to spark a team. Right at the end of the quarter, James Riley has provided that. Who knows, might have time for one more. Went up high to Watson a little too high. So Delaware will take a one goal lead into the second quarter. Well, Coach, this has been worth the wait. 45 minute weather delay. Now we are ready for some lacrosse. This has the makings of a fun one. The final game of eight on a loaded lacrosse weekend. Four games yesterday, four games today. Maybe they've saved the best for last. Kevin Ward, Ben DeLuca, Delaware and Georgetown going punch for punch in the opening 15 minutes of the Blue Heads. Control that one goal lead headed to the second quarter. Want to manage COVID? Just. It's.
playoffs, but in the NHL as well. And we've got a game seven for a playoffs, NHL playoffs, NCAA lacrosse playoffs as well. Seven teams have locked up a spot in next week's quarterfinal. Georgetown and Delaware, the winner of our game going on right now, will take on Cornell in Columbus, Ohio. Don Zimmerman, Jay Alter with you. And we just talked about hockey game seven. Every game in this tournament is a game seven, coach. Absolutely. Like we said, sudden death. And uh, the players know it. This is what they dream about, you know, growing up and, and playing this great sport. They're here. They're on the stage. You go for it. Georgetown scored two goals in 16 seconds to end that first quarter, but it's a first quarter that belonged to Delaware. Blue Hens start with the ball in the second quarter. They have won six straight games after leading after the end of the first quarter, nine and two on the season. They're playing with tons of confidence. One by 12 on Wednesday against Robert Moore, so they have carried that over to DC. Going against a defense that only allows eight goals a game which is number one in the country allowed four in that first quarter miscommunication jp ward wasn't looking for the ball it hit him in the leg will bowen very comfortable with the ball will clear it for the hoyas he's been another impact transfer out of north carolina bowen still with it finally gives it up good aggressive player 41 ground balls, 34 calls, turnovers in one season. And Georgetown's been uncharacteristic. It's now five turnovers for the Hoyas. Well, give the Delaware defense credit for that. They're playing excellent one-on-one -on -one defense. They're communicating. Their stick position is outstanding. Throwing a lot of poke checks. Best check in lacrosse. Control the gloves, control the player. I know everybody loves offense, but if you're a young defenseman watching this game, these are two of the best on the defensive side of the field. Take notes. Delaware doing a nice job managing the tempo of the game, too. They can run, no doubt about it. But they want to play at this pace in no hurry on offense. Georgetown deploying the same defensive scheme. They do not go back with the pick man. They'll keep his defender in front of the goal. Great cut. McElroy with an immaculate save to the rescue. How did he get in front of that? Showing why he was the Big East goalkeeper of the year, one of the best goalies of the country. His second save and a big one right on the doorstep. Held his position. Delaware reloads. Here's J.P. Ward. Working on Bowen. Bowen all over him. Curling around the cage. Ward can't get it past McElroy. Two saves for Owen McElroy on that possession. Both big. Got that one with his foot. Again, great position. Busy week for Owen McElroy. On Tuesday, he was drafted by... Chrome Lacrosse Club. He's headed to the PLL, which we're so excited about on ESPN coming this summer. Starts in Albany the weekend after Memorial Day, so your lacrosse viewing can keep on going all summer long. And with players like Owen McElroy, that is must see TV. Trippy likes his left hand, but he will drive down the alley right handed. Team comes in, passes out of it. Bundy off the pipe, inches away from tying this game at four. Boy, Bundy can let it rip. He's got that quick release, too. That's the key. You know, get the ball on your stick. And, and, and a good assist, a good feed helps you do that. You don't have to move your stick. It's right there. Trippy again, he's been the facilitator tonight. Has a goal to his name as well. Gives it up for McDermott. Stepped in, fired, blocked away. Who's gonna pick up the ground ball? 50-50 ball, so crucial to this tournament. Georgetown keeps it alive. Great play. Under 20 seconds left on the shot clock. 
Trippy, the extra pass off the side netting. And Kilcarry will scoop it up and start the clear. That was a good offensive possession by the Hoyas. They got some quality shots, second chance opportunities. like the first quarter no goals in the opening five minutes of this quarter defense dominating the game two confident clubs playing their best lacrosse of the season at the right time according to both head coaches they've proven that tonight Delaware unafraid going right at the two seed of this tournament Ty Kurtz has a mismatch here he's got a short stick let's see what he does with it Double team comes in, Kurtz tried to feed it to J.P. Ward, he missed him, and that's a turnover. That would have been a goal if he hit him on the stick. Nice job that time. But James Donaldson on the slide, calls the turnover, well-timed. Good, close defense, it's Donaldson, Will Bowen, who gets a ton of praise, and rightly so, the transfer out of North Carolina, Gibson Smith, who's been a five-year staple for the Hoyas. A unit that is so comfortable playing with one another in front of Owen McElroy. Do you think Georgetown, you think defense, number one scoring defense in the country, looking for some offense to tie this game. Delaware has been so disciplined, tough to break down, hands free, missed it. Georgetown's playing attackman T.J. Haley out front. Quick restart. Couldn't quite get the angle curling around the cage. Trippy. Colin Monroe on the restart. 30 seconds left on the shot clock. Right back to Trippy. Curl it around the left side this time, and he scores! <laughs> Alex Trippi nets his second goal of the night to tie it at four. Alex Trippi wants that left hand. And he works awfully hard to get it. Uses quick change of direction, sets his defender up. This time he's going left-handed again. Gets that one step, turns the corner, and just sneaks it in on Matt Kilcarry. Real nice shot. I don't think Kilcarry was ready for it. He shot it through the defender. Good ploy by an offensive player. Shoot through the defender. You got yourself a screen. Kilcarry's been excellent tonight, but he might want that one back. I'm with you, Coach. I don't think he thought Trippy was going to shoot. Quick release after curling around the cage. Ties it at four. And now Georgetown, an opportunity to take their first lead of the evening. This is Graham Bundy Jr. Down the right alley, passes out of the double team. Another guy with a quick release, Dylan Watson, who leads the country in goals per game. None to his name tonight so far. Dylan Hess, 40 and gray. Georgetown has so many guys that can initiate the attack. We've seen Trippy, Haley do it primarily. Six guys all out there that are comfortable creating their own shot. One of them's Graham Bundy Jr. Lowers his shoulder, trying to muscle his way in. Stays on his feet and scores! What a goal! Graham Bundy Jr. Tried with muscle at first, then with, with the speed to blow right past Owen Grant. Wow! Just what, what an effort. What an effort by Grant Bundy. There's no quit. Gets underneath, battles his way. Good defense that time, but he just sticks with it. Oh, the overhand, that hurt him. Nice effort.
This is Six Flags. Oh, we could, we could fly. Home to heart pounding rides and lifelong memories. Don't miss our Memorial Weekend sale. For $69.99, get unlimited visits through Labor Day, plus parking and Wild Safari drive through Adventure are included. Just two payments of $35 each. Go again and again to Six Flags and Wild Safari Adventure. This is Six Flags. Come make it yours. Great news. Children's Hospital of Philadelphia now has a second hospital in King of Prussia for you, for you, and for you. Our new hospital in King of Prussia, open now for you. Now, Delaware threw the first punch of this game. They had a 4-1 lead against the two-seeded Georgetown Hoy. It was a terrific start for the Colonial Champs. But Coach Georgetown showing why they've got that championship pedigree, four straight Big East Tournament championships. They punch right back. They sure do, and you know, that came after a timeout by Coach Warren. A, a really good timeout to just settle his troops down, get them all on the same page. Four straight goals for Georgetown. That's a way to come out of a timeout. A man you know very well, spent three years on your staff at UMBC as an assistant. Now his 10th season as a head coach with Georgetown. Did you know he was gonna be a great head coach when his time came? I did. It just the passion in the man is unbelievable. Uh, kids love playing for him. He takes care of his kids. He's honest with them. Uh, just a great mentor and, and coach. Logan Premtage didn't know that the ball was on the ground, had to turn around and scoop it up, win possession for Delaware. That last goal from Graham Bundy Jr., just a terrific effort from one of the best midfielders in the nation. You know, talent's going to get you so far, but boy, if you have talent and effort, uh, desire, that is a player. Fires Georgetown into their first lead of the night. Delaware trying to end this 4 nothing Hoyas run. Great move. Everything but the finish. Drew Lankite has got plenty of space, just didn't have the angle. I thought he could have taken a couple more steps, improved his angle on that one, let it go a little too early. I think he got excited after the swim dodge freed himself up. Risky pass against this Hoyas defense. Check out the wheels. Zach Geddes showing why he was taken number eight in the PLL draft. Kill carry a terrific goal to deny a save to deny a transition goal. A second save. Wow. We got action. Kill carry. This is end to end stuff. Delaware's time to take it in transition. That play by Zach Geddes was unbelievable. I mean, a tough first time ground ball and the speed that he displayed to get it first time, take off up the field, start that counterattack. Great play. Somewhere chaos head coach Andy Towers is smiling. Jack Rowlett, volunteer assistant for Georgetown, also plays for Andy Towers in the chaos. So I think Rowlett tipped off his head coach. We got a good one and Coach Towers took him number eight overall on Tuesday night. Just the speed from Geddes. Another great opportunity for Delaware. Couldn't sneak it home. Ty Kurtz. That's two really good opportunities missed for the Blue Hens now. Kytus curls around and beats McElroy. Drew Lankitis ties it at five. Number eight in blue, Drew Lankitis. He's having a heck of a game. He's doing it left-handed and he's doing it right-handed. Tough to cover when a man can go both ways. Gets that step. Turns that out short side shoulder in towards the goal. Wraps it around the goalkeeper. One goal, two assists for Lankitis. The junior out of Westchester, Pennsylvania, transferred in from Vermont. 
Lead win is a face-off X from James Riley. He's got a goal to his name tonight. This is what playoff lacrosse is all about, Coach. Two teams going punch for punch, tied at five with under five to play in the second quarter. And it's very exciting. Right now, what do we have? Nine teams left in the uh, in the field after this game. Eight. Seven spots in next weekend's quarterfinal have been confirmed. Cornell awaiting the winner of this one. Great passing, frees up McDermott, an absolute laser. Kilcarry, another save. That's nine for Matt Kilcarry in this first half. He saw that one all the way, had his eyes on it, had great position, hands up, looked the ball into a stick. We're hyping up Owen McElroy all night long, telling you that he's the best goalie in the country, and rightly so, but it's Matt Kilcarry for Delaware that has stood tall in between the pipes. He's been terrific. Toughest position on the field. And I would imagine that Matt Kilcarry is looking down the other end and said, you know what, I want to play my best game against this outstanding goalkeeper. You know what it's like to have a great goalie in playoff lacrosse. Quinn Kesnick, 1987, took us to the national championship as a freshman. Oh, nice one more. Great close down, Bowen, but there's a flag on the field. This will go against the Hoyas. Delaware moving on to the extra man, an opportunity to take back the lead. I believe that's the first penalty of this game. Correct. Both teams are playing clean. Referees appreciate that, and they're letting them play. Just got him up top early on. Delaware 41% on the season, man up. Off ball movement, puts him into a 1-3-2. Looking for that lead under three minutes left in the second quarter. First round matchup that is delivered and then some. This will close it dead. Ball to Georgetown. Moving pick called there. Off the ball. I didn't see it. Boyas could kill this extra man and then still have plenty of time left on the shot clock and even strength to grab a goal. Counter more in the transfer out of Notre Dame. 27 in gray. Just Going to hold this for the final seven seconds, get back to even strength. He's been quiet tonight, but he's made a great impact since coming over from South Bend. Here's Alex Trippi with a burst of speed down the right alley. Everything but the finish that time for Trippi. Created a great angle for himself with his speed. Shot clock going to get five seconds added to it. Reset to 30. Here's Trippy again. He's had the ball in his stick a lot tonight. John Shiver, he's a real nice defensive midi. Trippy's deceptive. Great pass, and Georgetown takes the lead. Declan McDermott with a terrific cut and finish. And the Hoyas are back on top. It all starts with Trippy. He knows how to get his left hand. It's that first move, tough to defend. And then just a perfect cut. The timing was right there. Again, the feed right on the money. Catches and delivers. Big goal for the Hoyas. Taj and Riley back at the faceoff X, been a battle all night long. And it's Delaware that wins possession. <laughs> Bluehead started this game with a 3 0 lead, then went up 4 1. 
Since then, Georgetown has responded with a 6-2 run. Ben DeLuca takes a timeout. An opportunity to draw something up to tie this game at six. Gives us an opportunity to remind you that the NCAA men's lacrosse coverage continues next week with the quarterfinal. Action begins on Saturday, noon Eastern time on ESPNU. For more information on the 2022 men's lacrosse championship, visit NCAA.com, your home for all 90 NCAA championships. Very exciting news, Coach. This is breaking news to even us. We've just been told we are going to announce at halftime the inside lacrosse All-Americans. So we will reveal that to the audience for the first time. Very special honor. Can't think of anything outside of a national championship better than being named an All-American. No. Yeah, individually, it's it's the highest honor you can, can receive. Uh, but as a team, it, it's all about getting that gold, getting the national championship. And I'm sure every player on this team would gladly give up a first team All-America honor to be a part of a national championship with Charles team. Who knows, we might see some players in this game tonight be named an inside lacrosse first team All-America. So that's coming up at halftime as we continue to set the table, recap what was just an outstanding opening weekend, as it always is. This is the best time of the year. May Madness, seven spots secured. <laughs> Look at that first one. Maryland, Virginia in the quarterfinal. That's a championship caliber game. Unheard of. And, um, you know, a lot of people thought those teams would repeat as, as uh, participating in the national championship game on Memorial Day weekend. So you never know what's going to happen. You just got to be ready to play. Uh, when you're called upon, be ready. And then Cornell awaiting the winner of this game, Georgetown, Delaware. That's the other game in Columbus, Ohio on May 22nd. We'll try and reveal the game times before we get off the air. They're not official yet, but when we get them, we'll get them to you. Delaware coming out of the Ben DeLuca timeout. What do you want to see here, Coach? Well, I think here's the invert, the um, isolation, little off-ball movement. Look for their shooters to start off inside and pop out. Number eight in blue and yellow. Drew Lenkite is a goal and two assists to his name tonight. He's going to hold on to the ball, probably go with about, um, you know, 25 seconds. Working against Jack Leary, the short stick sophomore. This is where that Del Delaware defense has to be on the same page. You never know what's going to come down the field. Be ready. Looks over at the shot clock, sees a tick under 25, down to 20, and here goes Lenkinus on the move. Working against Leary. Spins his way in, has Leary off balance, decides not to attack. Now 10 seconds on the shot clock. Double, double team comes in, and Georgetown comes up with the cause turnover, showing why they're the most talented defense in the country. Number one scoring defense in the regular season. You just got a glimpse why. Great job by short stick number 16, Jack Leary. Held his own, more than held his own. And now Kevin Warren can take a timeout. He'll have 10 seconds to operate before halftime, make it a two goal game. Take another look at this defensive effort. Yep, Leary does a great job. Staying in contact and a terrific double that time by Alex Mazzone. You know, if you're Delaware, you have to be really proud of this effort in the first half. And yet, you, you have to find a way to keep this a one-goal game headed into halftime. Well, exactly. One more it's, it's all about the next play. Yeah. It's the next play. You, you, you take them one play at a time, and you add them up after 60 minutes. And great crowd on hand at Cooper Field as well. Really enjoying this atmosphere. A 45-minute weather delay, Coach, and the fans were not deferred, deterred. Yep, good crowd here tonight, and they're watching a heck of a game. The game's lived up to it. They added a second and a half back onto the game clock. You know Kevin Warren pretty good. He was on your staff for three years at UMBC. What did he draw up? 
Well, I think this is uh, going to go to the offensive coordinator, Michael Phipps. I think it's just going to be a little uh, wing dodge. They'll shut off the points, or they'll try to come up top with it. La Rosie. Trippy keeps it alive after the Aaron pass. Two seconds left. That goes wide. 2.4 seconds remaining. Backed up by Watson. Has to hurry. Heaves it in. The Delaware survives a final Georgetown attack. Hoyas take a one goal lead into halftime, but this has been a tremendous game. Worth the wait. The nightcap, the final of eight in this outstanding opening round. We will give you a quarterfinals preview. The seven teams that have booked a spot will take a look at the games previously played. And also, don't want to miss this. Inside lacrosse, All-American first team will be revealed. Really, look, we haven't even seen them yet. So we're really looking forward to that. Stick with us at halftime. Delaware and Georgetown battling the final of eight games of this first round. We've got a fun halftime and second half coming on ESPNU. He had a good angle on Again, like we said, the face-off face violation. They have proven that this is not a fluke. Over the course of 30 minutes, Ben DeLuca's program, they have fought punch for punch. And we expected this. You know, they have, these teams have a lot of talent. And Obviously, Georgetown is the number two seed, uh, has had a terrific season, but so has Delaware, and they take different paths, but here they are tonight. So uh, the next 30 minutes is what it's all about. Logan Premtage for Delaware in blue and yellow. James Riley, who scored a goal in the first half, in gray and navy for the home team Hoyas. Buckle up. Fun second half coming. It's Delaware that starts with the ball. Look at the tie this game for the third time tonight. That's a countable faceoff violation. You get two, and on the third one, and subsequent, it's a penalty, 32nd. Mike Robinson thought he got his hands free. Gibson Smith didn't give up on the play. Trail check. Stays with Delaware. Blue Heads have won four of the last five from the faceoff X. They're going to need that in the second half. They want to win this game. Again, like we said, the faceoffs are so important. It's about possession. Ty Kurtz couldn't blow it past McElroy. They say Delaware got that first. Kevin Warren is not happy running up that Hoya sideline. Couldn't believe it. He thought Georgetown was first to the ball. He had a good angle on it. Double team comes in. Delaware in trouble. Kurtz settles it down. 20 seconds left on the shot clock. I love the way Georgetown's defense slides. Perfectly timed. Calling for it, Robinson off the pipe. Follows his own shot, wins possession back, and Delaware will reload. Robinson inches away from tying this game at six. He is sneaky off ball. He's got a great stick. His teammates look for him. Miller, patient, wraps around. Creates the angle for himself, and Delaware once again backs it up. They'll reload for the fourth time on this possession. Desperate for a goal to tie this game at six. Again, defenseman doesn't go back with the man sending the pick. He'll stay out front and be a backer. You pointed it out in the first half, but Georgetown always switches on the screen. So comfortable guarding man for man. They really don't care about matchups. They have confidence in every one of their defensive players that they can do the job. That's very rare at this level. Double team comes in, causes the turnover. Georgetown clears it successfully. And that's what you're talking about. They just have the personnel where they can afford to do it. It's rare because not a lot of teams around the country have the personnel to fit that scheme. 
And, and when they switch, it doesn't, they don't change their defense. They stay with their base defense. Everybody plays sound, fundamental defensive lacrosse. Short stick, long stick, it doesn't matter. You make it sound so easy, Georgetown makes it look so easy, but it's not that easy. No, it is not. Bundy weaving in, it scores! Graham Bundy delivers again. That's a hat trick today for the junior, and Georgetown now takes a two-goal advantage. Boy, he's fun to watch. Fun to watch, love what we're seeing out. Graham Bundy, he is just relentless. He's going to go to the goal, and you got to use your body to stop him. Stick's not going to get it done. Right? You're waving your sticks it has no effect on him. You got it back with body. Just a determined effort. Head coach Kevin Ward fired up. You used the word, the adjective, passionate. When I asked you one adjective to describe Kevin Ward, you saw it there. Sure did. And this team's passionate. You can tell the way they play the game. They play with passion, and they play with poise. Bundy, by the way, we just told you at halftime, inside lacrosse, first team All-American. A couple of minutes into this half, he shows you why. He backed it right up. He just keeps coming. Can beat you in a variety of ways, too. He has three of Georgetown's seven goals tonight. Hoya's back on the ball. Delaware staying with their man-to-man. -man. Oh, and Grant really pressed up, trying to cause a turnover. Finally got it away, scoops it up. Great cause turnover by the Colonial Defender of the Year. Number 81 in blue, he's been active all night. Good ride by the Georgetown attack. Six turnovers now for the Hoyas. A 6'3", 215, Owen Grant, number 81 for Delaware. He is an imposing figure on the defensive end. Here's J.P. Ward curling around. At no angle, shot it anyway. That'll never beat Owen McElroy. So comfortable in cage. Held his pipe. But Georgetown trailed in this game four to one. Since then, they've held Delaware to just one goal in 21 minutes. It's allowed them to not only come back, but take the lead and grab control of this game. Well, we said uh, right from the top, it's about the Georgetown's defense, and they've uh, risen to the occasion after a slow start. And they've put the clamp on the Blue Hens. One goal in just 21 minutes. Now, Delaware thought they were first to the ball. We just saw that happen on the other side of the field. Instead, it's awarded to Georgetown. Both Hoyas coaches, reload. Both coaches had real good looks at that. It was at their bench end. They're going to call Ward there, and that's a good call. You don't see it called often, but when you take that free hand off the stick, bad things can happen. That's the swim move, but the referee was right there, and I think it's a good call. So easier said than done against this stout Georgetown defense, and they've shown it all season long. Lead the nation in scoring defense, only allowing just over eight goals a game. But if you're a team that's now out of rhythm, out of flow, one goal in the last 22 minutes, how do you break out of that? Well, you got guys have to step up and, and make plays. Not, nothing spectacular, there's still plenty of time. You know, stick to the game plan, but make plays. If you have a shot, you got to can it. If you got to get a ground ball, you got to can it. Instead, a needless turnover off ball. That's what you don't want to do. You don't want to give the ball right back to your opponent. So nine turnovers for Delaware. 
And such a great rhythm to start this game. So much confidence. You could feel that 20 goal performance on Wednesday against Robert Morris in the playing game carrying over into tonight. Georgetown settled down and just totally in the driver's seat now. Well, you know, um, Coach Warren in our telephone interview said that he wants his defense to make the opponents uncomfortable. Right now, Delaware looks uncomfortable. Does fatigue become a problem for Delaware off that short rest game on Wednesday? It, it could, and it's uh, awfully humid out here tonight. But again, these athletes are well conditioned, and uh, the adrenaline plus the good conditioning really should take care of business. Fifteen seconds left on the shot clock. DJ Haley. Now Trippy trying to get his hands free. The lefty. Great effort that Dispossessed. Time. Battle for the ground ball won by Delaware. That was Jason Sider with the all-out effort. He dove to make that check. That's what you need. There's no tomorrow. you got to lay it all out on the field tonight. A defensive showcase. Both teams coming up with big stop after big stop. You know, made the point in the first half. This is not bad offense. This is just really talented defense causing turnovers. They're playing the game the way it's supposed to on that side of the ball. And both goalkeepers have really played yeah. well. Delaware desperate for a goal. Only one in the last 25 minutes, and they get it right on cue. A flamethrower from the captain, Mark Bita to beat McElroy, and just like that, Coach Delaware back within one. All starts at the other end. We talked about how important possession is. That time, Bita finished it. Great timely check, what an effort. That's what it takes. Now you're coming down, and a great look through. And there's Bita, sticks it. Coach DeLuca likes that one. Big goal for the Blue Hens. Want to manage COVID? Just... Pay for with Pennsylvania taxpayer dollars. Let's put COVID to rest. This is Six Flags. Oh, we could, we could fly. Home to heart-pounding rides and lifelong memories. Don't miss our Memorial Weekend sale. For $69.99, get unlimited visits through Labor Day, plus parking and Wild Safari drive through Adventure are included. Just two payments of $35 each. Go again and again to Six Flags and Wild Safari Adventure. Oh, this we could, we is could Six Flags. Come make it yours. We are set up for arguably the greatest season of professional lacrosse history. We're in this together with 48 minutes. Start to finish and beat them. We cannot wait for the PLL on ESPN. And earlier this week, the coaches all up at Bristol, our headquarters for ESPN for the PLL draft. Here's some of the guys taken in that draft that you saw over the course of the weekend. I'll point out Zachary Geddes, who's been terrific tonight for Georgetown. Athleticism is such a key factor in playing for the PLL. I look at this list, and you've just got tremendous athletes. And Logan, or Owen McElroy as well, goalkeeper for Georgetown, selected by the Chrome. Chrome looking to replace John Galloway, who was terrific in his professional career. So McElroy, big shoes to fill for Chrome. He's focused on trying to escape the first round with a win. Georgetown and Delaware, two teams that are not giving each other any room, Coach. When one throws a punch, the other answers right back. That's what you expect when you're playing uh, in, in this tournament at this level right now. Again, there's no tomorrow. You, you leave it all out on the field. You don't need to be a hero. 
You need six guys on offense and seven guys on defense that know and understand and perform their role. Don Zimmerman, Jay Alter with you. Georgetown looking to add to this one goal lead. The Delaware has stood tall on the defensive end of the field. Stringing together stops. Started the game with a 3 0 lead. Georgetown's battled back to take the lead. Bundy will back it up for the Hoyas. 30 seconds left on the shot clock. Kevin Lynch doing a real nice job tonight on Connor Morin. Tough assignment, but he's held up. Morin with it here. The transfer from Notre Dame spins his way around. Give and go. 15 seconds on the shot clock. Morin lost the handle. Delaware comes up big again. How fun is this defense to watch? They're smart, they're aggressive, they're playing together. Good communication. Everybody on the same page. There's the goalkeeper, Matt Kilcary, who got the stops in the first half. Now it's the defense causing the turnovers, nine of them to their name, to go along with Kilcary's nine saves. That's how you steal possessions, right? Saves who cause turnovers, name of the game. Super patient approach on the offensive end. Usually take the shot clock under 30 before they really launch into an attack. It's here now. They get it over the 22 with blue and yellow. Clay, Clay Miller. Miller. He's going to go. He's got the speed. The Sports Center's top play on Wednesday night in the win against Robert Morris. That time, not a good look on goal. Easy save for McElroy, his seventh. That was a set play, a little rosy. Handled well by Georgetown. Trying to get a goal in transition. Watson, who leads the nation at goals per game, yet to score tonight. Delaware may have numbers here. Blue Hens push it almost inches away from tying this game at seven. Backed up by J.P. Ward. You like them going to goal there in transition? I do. you got to be aggressive if you, if you see it. You, you got to go for it. It's all about making good decisions. That time I thought that was a good decision. You got to stay aggressive. Robinson, the lefty, too much on it, and Georgetown backs it up. Great play by Jack Leary. Saw that shot was going way over the cage. Wins the ball back for the Hoyas. That time J.P. Ward was too uh, high. At the goal line extended, maybe looking for a feed. Got to back up that shot. Here's Alex Trippy. He's taken nine shots today, the transfer out of North Carolina. And Georgetown notches another. Right down the right alley. Nobody picked him up. TJ Haley makes the Blue Hens pay. And the Hoyas have their two goal lead restored. Nothing complicated about this move. First move, acceleration. Little pick may have disrupted the defensive communication there. Probably should have switched on that. When in doubt, switch. Good recognition by Haley. Got his right hand. Hits a net. A rare miscommunication for this Delaware defense has been so solid all night long. Haley capitalizes on it. Well, that's why you set those little picks. You know, it forces the defense to communicate. Anticipate and communicate. Eight minutes and 47 seconds in between Georgetown's two last goals, and yet the Hoyas control the lead. That's what a good defense will do for you. Delaware desperate for a goal to make it a one-goal game again.
feel like they haven't had a really good look at a while. Trying long shots. Jessen got his left hand there. He got the middle of the field in his left hand. Just got to can it. Back to Jessen. Here's a junior. Saved again by McElroy. Oh, and McElroy's really settled in. Eight saves. Only six goals allowed. We showed you at halftime he was just named an inside lacrosse first team All-American. You're getting a glimpse of why. That was a force by Jessen on that last shot. Easy save from McElroy. You watch Georgetown on film and we said to each other this week, it's a lot of easy saves for McElroy at times because the defense does such a good job forcing their opponent into undesirable shots. Well, you don't see the Georgetown defense throw a lot of unnecessary checks. They play good position with their legs and they keep the sticks in the gloves. Again, if you can control the gloves, you can control the player. More space. Haley this time missed it. Almost from the identical spot he just scored from. Well, if it works once, try it again. Make him stop you. Really haven't heard anything out of Dylan Watson tonight. He's an off-ball guy, a shooter. Delaware doing a nice job taking him out of the game. 58 goals on the season for Watson. None tonight. Great save. Kill Carey stopped it with his legs. And now off and running is Owen Grant. They've got numbers. Grant not afraid to shoot. Goes right to Cage and misses. He's got six goals on the season. Almost bagged a seven. Boy, that would have been a big one for the Blue Hens. That was their best look at this third quarter. Love the way Owen Grant plays. Under a minute left in it. Delaware offense needs to do something here. Tough to do going against the number one scoring defense in the country. Easier said than done. Hoyas really have settled down, dialed in defensively. Delaware scored four goals early in this game. Since then, just two in the last 30 minutes or so. The Hoyas have outstanding short stick defensive middies. Again, that's why they don't have to switch. And they got a bunch of them. They can come at you in waves. Miller curling around the cage. Not a great angle. McElroy snuffs it out again. Gets it to Geddes. Check out the speed on Zachary Geddes. He'll go full field in a hurry. Lowers his shoulder. Tried to do a little too much there. Owen Grant did a great job to sniff it out and end the third quarter with a stop. This game is all about the defense, coach. That's what it's all about. Defense, again, they're stepping up. They're making it tough to score. Uh, and some good back and forth action. Goalies are playing great. It's been an awesome game. Buckle up. Fun finish coming. Fourth quarter we go. Two-seeded Georgetown hanging on to a two-goal lead here at D.C. Want to manage COVID? Just... Pay for Pennsylvania taxpayer dollars. Let's put COVID to rest. We have to be able to repair the enamel on a daily basis. With Pro Enamel Repair Toothpaste, we can help actively repair enamel in its weakened state. It's innovative. My go-to toothpaste is going to be Pro Enamel Repair. We've got a fun finish coming in the nation's capital, Delaware, and the two-seeded Georgetown Hoyas, just a two-goal game. Hoyas trying to hang on and book the final spot in our quarterfinal. We've also got the women's lacrosse quarterfinal coming this Thursday. All games airing on ESPNU. Just got times announced. Starts at noon, right down the road at College Park, then over to Chestnut Hill. Charlotte North and Boston College taking on Loyola. Syracuse at Northwestern, a rematch of last year's national semifinal, and then the number one undefeated North Carolina Tar Heels against Stony Brook. So those games are on Thursday, 
and then the men's quarterfinal will pick up on Saturday. Final spot up for grabs in this fourth quarter. Cornell awaiting the winner of Georgetown and Delaware. Don Zimmerman, Jay Alter with you. What's gonna separate these two teams down the stretch, Coach? The next 15 minutes, you know, every play counts, and the closer you get to the end of the game, the more important those plays are. Delaware's defense has stood tall all night long, battling for another cause turnover. They've got 10 of them in this game. Georgetown hangs on midway through the shot clock. Hoyas nursing a two goal advantage. Here's Trippy. He's not been shy. 10 shots attempted for the transfer from North Carolina. Double team comes in. He swims right through it. Almost scores. How did he get his hands free out of that double team? Well, he did the little swim move. He kept the stick protected. I was watching to see if there was a thumb in there, but there wasn't. That was just really good stick protection and agility by Trippy. Ten seconds on the shot clock. Hoyas have to hurry. They go right back to Trippy. Trying to work his way in. One second on the shot clock. And that's a shot clock violation for Georgetown. Almost got a goal with McDermott with a second left on the timer. McDermott slipped in there nicely. Didn't have any room to operate though. Got handcuffed. So Delaware scored Four goals early in this game. They're opening 13 minutes, led 4-1. Since then, only two goals in the last 33 minutes. Usually, you only score two goals in 33 minutes of lacrosse. You look at the scoreboard, you're way down. They're still in this game. Only two goals trailing the two seed in this tournament. Blue Hens have a big chance. Well, again, the, the Delaware defense has stepped up as well, and, and um, they're, they're keeping them in the game. Delaware eyeing their first first round win since 2007 when they beat two seeded Virginia. They went all the way to the championship weekend that year. Need to find some magic in the final 12 minutes and 45 seconds. Lenkaitis nowhere to go. Great opportunity, couldn't squeeze it through, and Georgetown wins the ball back. Great hustle. You're not going to get much better look than that. No. Got a shot right on the doorstep. In that situation, you got to shoot for net. I think a lot of times players look at the goalkeeper, and where you look is where you go sometimes. Look for the net. That's an opportunity Clay Miller will want back. Once again, the Blue Hens asking their defense for another stop. At some point, you got to help your defense on the other end. Can't keep asking them for stop after stop after stop, especially against a team as talented as Georgetown. Right, the offense has to come and step up. The defense is doing their job. The offense now has to step up, do their job. Here's Declan McDermott, explodes down the right alley, shoots it right at Kilcarry. Kilcarry saw it all the way. His 11th save of the night, keeping the Blue Hens in this game. Just what we talked about. Defense goalies, they keep you in the game. Offense, you got to come up, step up, get the job done. Dickey with the first line midfield of Lenkaitis, Miller, and Bita. Lenkaitis with it here, not a great angle. Backed up by Delaware though. J.P. Ward closest to it. Ward quick off the restart. Still with it. Ward in attack mode. Nowhere great to go. Slide. Double Great team slide. comes in, stole it away. Gibson Smith. One of his calls, turnovers. 
love the timing of the Georgetown slides. They're choreographed. They just play so well together. They know each other so well. And again, just keep it simple. What a unit. Fitting that it's Gibson Smith with the cause turnover. Ian Owen, McElroy, the only two guys on this Hoyas team that were freshmen on the 2018 Big East Championship team, a team that has gone down as turning the program around. Just a four-win program the year before. They win that Big East Championship. Now they've won four in a row. Smith and McElroy, the pillars of the program through that turnaround, the first two players in school history to win four straight conference titles. Double team comes in. Delaware desperate for the ground ball. And the Blue Hens have it. Stop after stop. Owen Grant and this Delaware defense is unafraid. On that ground ball, there were four blue jerseys and only three grays. Good numbers for the Hens. Giveaway. Kilcarry has to hurry back in cage. Hoyas have numbers. Watson couldn't squeeze it through. I think Owen Grant might have got in front of that one. The Colonial Defender of the Year helping his goalie out. It was blocked by Grant. A timeout taken in the corner by Georgetown. Great timeout by Coach Warren. Right there. Waited for his player to get possession. Timely. This game all about defense. Kevin Warren's Hoyas trying to hold on down the stretch. Want to manage COVID? Just. Vax, test. Vax, test. Pay for a Pennsylvania taxpayer dollars. Vax, test. Let's put COVID to rest. We have to be able to repair the enamel on a daily basis. With Pro Enamel Repair Toothpaste, we can help actively repair enamel in its weakened state. It's innovative. My go-to toothpaste is going to be Pro Enamel Repair. The NCAA Men's Lacrosse Tournament continues next weekend with the quarterfinals. Action beginning in Long Island, noon Eastern time on ESPNU. For more information, NCAA.com. Your home for all 90 championships. Ben DeLuca desperate for his team to get one more stop. The defense has been terrific all night. Unfortunately, the offense, not much help. Hoy is out of the Kevin Warren timeout. Nine minutes away for booking the final spot in the quarterfinals we just told you about. In the first half, 11 goals between these two teams. It was 6-5 Georgetown at halftime. The entire second half, We've only gotten three combined goals, none in the fourth quarter. Oh, nice one more. Great save, Kilcarry to the rescue again. 12 on the night. Now can Delaware cash in on the other end? That's been the missing piece all night. Let's see if they come up with a, a different set or maybe a special play. Something to ignite this offense. Miller on the move. Georgetown shuts off a clean angle. Puts on the brakes. Dylan Hess, he's a good two-way midi. Behind oh. the back! What a goal! Robinson, are you kidding me? Makes it a one goal game. The crafty Canadian, what flair. Wow. You're going to want to take another look at this. What a beautiful play and a, a much needed goal. Just a great cut and then the behind the back. That's the Canadian influence. Didn't have a good angle. Whipped it behind his back. Kept running, kept moving. Again, the feed was right on the money. I think Delaware is going to have a Sports Center top 10 play twice in the same week. Well, that wow. was certainly worthy. Big goal for Delaware. Sports Center top 10 nominee. 
And more importantly than anything, the Blue Hens desperate for that goal, their first goal in this fourth quarter. A one goal game with under eight minutes to play. Two seeded Georgetown hanging on for dear life. Hoy is desperate to claim that final quarter final spot and a date with Cornell next weekend. We've got a stalemate here. That ball's got to come out. Somebody's got to make a move on it. Riley and Premtage content to just hold it on the block Georgetown G. Premtage finally digs it out for Delaware. Battle for the ground ball. Won by the Hoyas. Unsettled, a bouncer way over the cage of Kilcarry. And now George Channel sub on their first line midfield. Again, the faceoff is a three on three battle. That time, 14, Wallace Halbert came up big. He's got 25 ground balls of the season. That may be the biggest one. Trippy on the move down the right alley, trying to get it to his left hand, which he prefers, passes it off. Great look. Not buried though, backed up by Georgetown. Hoyas have not scored in 10 minutes and 30 seconds. Clinging to a one goal lead. Trippy, denied by Kilcarry. 14 saves for Matt Kilcarry tonight. That one's the biggest of the bunch. He's been spectacular. And now the Blue Hens an opportunity to tie this game at eight. It's amazing what a goal or a big save or a big ground ball will do for your team. Look at that bench now. Up on their feet, they're animated, they're excited. Opening weekend might have saved the best for last. The final quarter final spot on the line. We've got a one goal game with five minutes and 55 seconds to play. Lake Kite is a goal with two assists to his name tonight. Has it here for Delaware. Going low, denied by McElroy. Oh, and McElroy could not be fooled. That's his 12th save. These two goalies have both been terrific. Good discipline that time by McElroy. Held his position, stayed on the pipe. I think Ty Kurtz could have come in maybe a couple more steps and proved his angle. We tick down to five minutes left to this fourth quarter. Buckle up, fun finish coming in the nation's capital. Georgetown one timeout, Delaware with two. A little set play. Well defense that time by the Blue Hens. He's been quiet all night, but Connor Morin delivers. The transfer from Notre Dame. Picks the perfect time to score his first goal of the night to fire Georgetown up by two. 6'3", 2'15", grad student. He's got age, he's got physical ability, but again, just that first move, gets his hands free, and a perfectly placed shot off him on the goalkeeper. Big goal by the Hoyas. Little breathing room for Georgetown. Two goal lead, four minutes and 39 seconds left. Logan Premtage. They're gonna call a loose ball push that time or hold. They'll give the ball to Delaware. Now that is not a face-off, accountable face-off violation because it didn't happen right at the face-off square. The ball shot out. Delaware, who struggled to break down the stingy Georgetown defense all night long. Only seven goals. They need to find two in the final four minutes and 15 seconds. Miller, no angle, whiffed on the shot. 
McElroy calmly starts the clear for Georgetown. I love Clay Miller's heart. He's going to get everything he's got for 60 minutes. Leary tried it in transition. They're going to say Delaware backed it up. Kill Carey first to the line. Just to finish my thought, I just felt that time Miller took the ball to go a little too soon. He's tried that dodge now two or three times. Maybe take him on the other side of the cage, see if he can get anything over there. Nick Jessup sets up the Delaware attack. Hands free, stings the corner. Drew Lankitis, you can't place it any better. Makes it a one goal game with 3.29 to play. 6'3", 195, but that time it's all about quickness. Lankitis really showed that he's got some quick feet, understands where he is on the field. Just that swim move gets underneath. Slides a little late. A little change of speed, change of direction. That's what you need to dodge. Change of speed, change of direction. If you put a bullseye in that corner, he'd hit it. Three minutes and 29 seconds to go. Logan Premtage, James Riley at the face-off X. One by Premtage. And ball back to kill Carey. Delaware's done so well to battle in this game, going against the number one scoring defense in the country, the two seed in this term tournament, Georgetown. They've Logan gotten this far. Has won two in a row now for yes. him. Stepping up when it counts. Been huge at the face-off X. Now can they capitalize? You've gotten to this moment. Now can you seize it? Can you grab it? Well, that's what we're going to find out. Good timeout that time by Coach DeLuca. Just over three minutes. Longstick had the ball, maybe in a precarious situation. Use one of your timeouts, get them together, set something up. Tell them if it doesn't work, just stay with your offense and keep working to get that tying goal. Each team with one timeout now remaining for the final three minutes of regulation. Georgetown desperately clinging to this one goal lead, trying to book the final spot in what is a loaded quarterfinal field. Hey, take a look at this bracket. You got a rematch of the national championship at, at the top. Maryland against Virginia. Two-time reigning champs. Cavaliers going against undefeated Terps. Then all Ivy League matchup. Yale and Princeton to the 4-5. Penn and Rutgers, two teams playing their best lacrosse of the season. And then will it be Georgetown? Will it be Delaware that faces Cornell? How about the heart and the hustle from the Blue Hands in this game? I think a lot of people didn't give them a chance in this matchup, but they have been there. Started with a strong start, Coach, but they have not gone away. It doesn't matter what other people think. It's what you think. It's what those guys are thinking in that huddle right now. They believe that they could win this game. They came here to win this game against a very good Georgetown team playing terrific. Uh, this is what it's all about, and, and uh, it's great to watch. Where has Delaware been most effective offensively tonight? Where should they go on this critical attack? Well, I like it when they dodge from the wing and then uh, draw a slide if they can, and then bang it to the point, point behind, and get some inside action. I think they've been awfully one-on-one -on -one oriented. You've got to draw the slide and bang it. If you don't draw the slide, bang it. Just get, keep the ball moving, move off the ball, try to get your hands free for a quality shot. I'm kidding when I say this, but Ben DeLuca should just go over to Mike Robinson and say, hey, can you do the behind the back uh, <laughs> to the top corner again? Here we go, under three minutes to play. Delaware looking for their first NCAA tournament win since 2007. Home team Hoy is trying to cling to a one goal lead. Cut, wrap it around, falling as he shot at Mike Robinson. Delaware, great job to back it up. I like how they moved the ball that time. One more pass. Lankaitis, two goals, two assists to his name tonight. Has it here. Double team comes in, passes out of it. 
Here's the captain, Mark Bita, on the move. 15 seconds on the shot clock. Good what look. a pass. Can't find a better look. They kept with it. Ty Kurtz ties it at nine. Unbelievable display of poise and confidence with this Delaware offense. He stayed with it. Kurtz does a nice job. It's moving off the ball. Puts himself in the position to finish. Doesn't get any better than this. Tied for the third time tonight. First time since the second quarter. Critical face-off. Prem ties Riley. Battling. Big ground ball here. Biggest one of the game scooped up by Georgetown. Wallace Halpert has it for the Hoyas. And Kevin Ward uses his final timeout. Two minutes remaining in regulation. Georgetown now out of timeouts. Biggest ground ball of the season for the sophomore out of Baltimore. Wallace Halpert. Great timeout by Coach Warren. We were a head coach for a long time, Johns Hopkins UMBC, three-time national champion. What is Kevin Warren saying in his huddle right now? Well, his offensive coordinator is, um, you know, put in a play, and, and again, it's a play that they've either practiced during the week or something that he has a gut feeling about. Coach Warren's talking to the defense. You know, let's be ready if the ball comes back the other way. Who's got the point on the fast break? Middies, when in doubt, get back into the hole. You do not want to give up a counterattack goal if you're Georgetown. Defensively, Delaware's gonna get everybody on the same page, get their matchups, understand what they try to do, be ready to slide. And again, uh, should they get the ball, number one, let's clear it. I still have a timeout in my pocket, and we can go from there. I asked you earlier in the quarter, does fatigue become a factor for Delaware? Remember, they played on Wednesday night in the play-in game, beating Robert Morris. Right now, it does not appear so. Uh, I was I was concerned a little bit, uh, you know, maybe 10 minutes ago, but the fact that the Delaware offense has come to life has given every one of uh, the Delaware players just energy that they love to feel. The Delaware defense for Ben DeLuca have come up with stop after stop. Matt Kilcarry in cage has come up with 14 saves. He's been phenomenal. They need one more stop to give their offense a chance to win this game or force overtime. At what point on the shot clock should Georgetown attack here, Coach? Well, you know, um, you know the clock's not in their favor. So I would say you got, you got to get going. You got to get going here and, um, you know, run your offense. And if you don't get a high quality shot or maybe you get a rebound, then you get another 60 seconds. The sophomore quarterback, TJ Haley, has it on the near side. We're under 90 seconds to go in regulation. The final game of the first round has been worth the wait between two seeded Georgetown and unseeded Delaware. And the Hoyas give it away. A pass that Georgetown's completed a thousand times this season goes out of bounds. And Delaware has the ball with 70 seconds left. The Blue Hens have scored four of the last six goals in this game. Ben DeLuca takes a timeout. The shot clock is off. They can hold for the final shot, an opportunity to win this game and knock the two seed in this tournament out. Well, it worked out just uh, as we described. You know, I, I think Georgetown kind of sat on the ball a little bit. If you have a lead, you, you might want to do that. But when the score is tied, I think you got to go after them. You know, a tough, uh, unforced turnover on that pass. What an opening weekend. All the earlier games today, just speaking for Sunday, comfortable in the fourth quarter, but the final game all the drama that you want in a first round has been packed in to Delaware, 
Georgetown. Cornell awaiting the winner. Save the best for last. We had a weather delay. We had a rainbow come out at Cooper Field. And for Delaware, the Blue Hens have the ball. Both teams out of timeouts. What are you drawing up? Well, again, uh, Bede has been the guy who they've uh, looked at out front, but Lankitis has been the guy with the ball that's made things happen. I think you have to dodge hard and again, try to draw the slide. If you don't, just bang it. You know, maybe set a pick, run your offense. Bottom line is you want to get a high quality shot. If it's not a high quality shot, don't take it unless the shot clock's running out, but it's not a factor. So right now they're looking for that winning goal from a high quality shot. Delaware breaks the huddle. The Blue Hens and Ben DeLuca started this game on a 3-0 scoring run. Georgetown punched back, took a 6-5 halftime lead. You thought at that point maybe the Hoyas would hit another gear, win this game. No, Delaware kept battling, grinding, and now an opportunity with the shot clock off to hold for the last shot and upset the two seed of this tournament. Now, a little bit of a different situation because the shot clock's not a factor. They can hold on to the ball and try to get that last shot. But again, you don't want to do it uh, where you're going to give Georgetown a chance to come back with a quick counterattack goal. Here we go. Yeah, you want a worst-case scenario, you're going to overtime, right? Exactly. If you're Delaware. I think the officials have done a great job tonight letting these two teams play. All comes down to this. Final 15 seconds of regulation. Lenkaitis, two goals, two assists today. Passes it off. Delaware takes the lead. J.P. Ward fires the Blue Hens in front. Started with Bita. He drew the attention of the defense. Nice job by J.P. Ward, who was playing out front. Got his hands free, got into an open lane. Nice feed and rips it. Just playing lacrosse. Simple things, effective. The Blue Hens, 8.8 .8 seconds away from advancing to the quarterfinal and upsetting the two seed in this tournament. James Riley and the Hoyas desperate for a face-off win to keep this magical season alive. Riley wins it. Georgetown out of timeouts. Pass behind. Delaware wins! An incredible game. The Colonial champs, Ben DeLuca and the Blue Hands are moving on to the quarterfinals. This is what this tournament is all about, Coach. The agony and the ecstasy, you know, again, at this point in the season, throw out the records. Delaware came here believing they could win. They hung in there when it looked down, but they came back, they hung tight and just um, five of the last seven goals. I mean, it doesn't get any better than that. And for Georgetown, they got a heck of a team. I know they're disappointed, but uh, what a season. They just ran into a, a, a spirited, and emotional, and talented believers in the Delaware Blue Hens. First tournament win since 2007 for Delaware. That year, they played Virginia, who was the two seed of the tournament. They upset the Cavaliers, went on to play in championship weekend. They can beat Cornell next weekend. They'll book another spot at championship weekend. And 
for Georgetown. A magical 15-1 season, the two seed in this tournament. The Hoya season has come to an end. Take another look at the winner. J.P. Ward, the hero, fires Delaware into the quarterfinals. We'll break it all down when we come back. What a win, what a story for Delaware. Want to manage COVID? Just... Pennsylvania taxpayer dollars. Let's put COVID to rest. We have to be able to repair the enamel on a daily basis. With Pro Enamel Repair Toothpaste, we can help actively repair enamel in its weakened state. It's innovative. My go-to toothpaste is going to be Pro Enamel Repair. This is what sports is all about. And in this sport, in May, you get madness, and we saw it tonight. Delaware taking out the two-seeded Georgetown Hoyas. Ben DeLuca in the blue hands marching on to the quarterfinals. They get a matchup with Cornell. Coach Don Zimmerman, Jay Alter with you. The last two-seed to lose at this tournament, Denver in 2016. Ben DeLuca joining us now. Coach, you just knocked out the two-seed in this tournament. How did your young men do it? Uh, they believed. They, they believed before we even stepped on the field. Uh, they worked their tail off for this opportunity. And then, you know, coming out here uh, through the lightning delay and, and through all the adversity, uh, our guys just worked incredibly hard for this, uh, for this chance and fought every step of the way. And that's a, a really good team, very well coached, very talented. Um, and I'm just so proud of our captains and our seniors for the way that they led us uh, through their quick turnaround and practice and uh, coming out here and, and playing hard, playing Delaware Lacrosse to earn a win. Coach, you told us during our call this week that you were coming here to win, that your players believed they could. You fell behind a little bit, and, you know, naysayers may have said, hey, I don't know, this, this is Georgetown's run, but you guys hung in there. You got some key face-offs, some key saves, and really showed a, just a great effort. Your team epitomizes what it means to compete for 60 minutes and, and, and believe in one another, and, and just uh, congratulations on the win. Thanks so much, Coach. That means a lot coming from, from you. I really appreciate it, and, and I think you're right. Our, our guys have worked really hard. They believe in each other. Um, they scrapped. They fought. They did what needed to be done. I can't say enough about Matt Kokarian goal, and you know, as a, as a senior, this is his moment, and, and our guys rallied behind him. Um, but it was all the little plays throughout the game. We, we knew that we were going to have to do just about everything we could in order to, to have a chance against a team like Georgetown, and, and, and we did. And um, I'm proud. I'm really excited for Blue Hen Nation. They came out in, in force today, and, and we felt their energy and, and fed off of that. And uh, we're excited uh, about the win and, and uh, excited to be uh, advancing. You had a terrific crowd on hand. Like you said, you gave them plenty to shout about. I wanted to ask you about Kill Carey, and you mentioned him. Felt like the way he came out and set the tone, those five saves of the first quarter, you guys get out to a 3 nothing lead. Was that the confidence that your guys needed in a game like this? Probably, yeah, probably. I think Matt has done it throughout the season. He's been on a heck of a run, um, you know, and he saw the ball really well. He made some really hard saves, some difficult saves against some very good shooters, and I think that allowed him to have some confidence in our defense as well. And, you know, again, offensively, we're fighting for every inch and, and everything that we could try and get there. And, um, you know, I think just our captains and our leadership led us through this today and, and the experience that we've had throughout the season, some ups and downs. It's all been a part of the process, and, and our guys have believed from, from the very first step and invested in that, and uh, excited to see it come to fruition today. Coach, when you took the job at Delaware, it was for nights like tonight. Congratulations. You're moving on to the quarterfinals. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Go Hens. Go Hens is right. Ben DeLuca coming to Delaware and now taking the Blue Hens to the quarterfinals. You heard Coach said it. It was the goalkeeper, the fifth year, Kill Carey, who set the tone. Well, right from the beginning of the game, he came up with some huge saves, and then he was just consistent for the entire 60 minutes. What a night. And his defense played very, very well in front of him. Look, we talked about Georgetown's defense. Delaware's defense stepped up big. Congratulations to the Blue Hen. Matt Kilcarry, our Capital One player of the game. You know, there were so many plays of the game. Kilcarry save. I'll tell you the one that I think changed everything, that Mike Robinson behind the back to the top corner, top cheddar. Wow, now we have it. 
The quarterfinals is set. Delaware, I mean, that's your big upset of the opening round. Take it on Cordell for a spot to championship weekend. Boy, that is a loaded quarterfinal. I can't wait for Saturday. Can't wait myself. It's going to be a great weekend of lacrosse. We've got the women's quarterfinals kicking things off on Thursday. That starts at noon with Maryland and Florida, and then a loaded weekend in Long Island and Columbus, Ohio. Uh, we saved the best for last. Yes, we did. That was a heck of a night. <laughs> Great working with you, Jay. Uh, always a pleasure, Coach. An outstanding opening round caps off in D.C. Fireworks from the Colonial Champs, Delaware. You are Cinderella. The Blue Hens are marching on a thrilling 10-9 win for Delaware. For our terrific crew, Coach Don Zimmerman, I'm Jay Alter saying so long from Georgetown. The two seed is out of this tournament. Delaware lives to fight another day.